but you will save so much time if you try this new activity with two to three partners and just see what happens to really understand what are they doing to see these wins and how can you maybe tweak that or adjust it and do something similar so it translates to your business. The struggle of attribution, it is possible. Welcome to Make Them Famous, the podcast about partner enablement. The only podcast to uncover both how partner teams enable their partners and how other department leaders enable their partner teams to achieve success. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Make Them Famous podcast, where we talk all about partner enablement and really diving deep into some partner leaders in the space. I am one of your co-hosts, Karina Shaheen, and I have been out for some time due to a transition in my industries, but still sticking in the partner ecosystem. This transition also really helped me better understand the kinds of conversations and questions that we should be asking when you are starting a new role. And that is a part of the enablement in the partner space that we haven't really discussed. I think it's super important to learn as much as you possibly can while you are starting a new role, even if it's still in the same type of department and under the partnership umbrella. I'm really excited to have our guest on today, someone that has been through the same experience pretty recently and can share all of her tips and tricks around how to really progress into a new partner role and how you can be successful. Our show would not be what it is today without the help from our incredible sponsors. So we'd love to give a shout out to all of you for Sendoso, helping to enable all of our partners to send gifts and meaningful moments to their partners at the most perfect time. Partner Stack for managing affiliates and partner communication, and they're ranked the number one PRM according to G2 Crowd. And Reveal, they are the simplest UI for account mapping, and its free version allows for everything that you need to do to co-sell with partners, including different integrations with CRM. Thank you so much to all of our sponsors. <laughs> all right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Make Them Famous. I have the lovely Mia Bobak. Is that how I pronounce your last name? Yes, you've got it right. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Well, I have the lovely Mia Bobak with me today. Um, she is one of the partner managers over at Gorgeous, an incredible company that I've been hearing so much about already. Um, I got the pleasure to chat with Mia really briefly, not too long ago, because I realized we were in the same boat and we both were very new to our industry in some sense, maybe, maybe me a little bit more new than you, um, but new to our companies. And it really did spark my, my mind in to talking a little bit more about enablement in your specific role to help you ramp up and get, you know, um, adjusted to everything that you're doing. So thank you so much for being here today, Mia. I'm excited to hear a little bit more about your story. <laughs> I am too. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. So excited to chat. Awesome. So I think it would be super helpful just to start out, maybe give us a little background on your current role. Um, you know, what, where you were previous, uh, to gorgeous and really what brought you to gorgeous today? Yeah, definitely. So currently right now I'm a tech partner manager at gorgeous where I work with other SaaS or software as a service companies to work together, to drive each other opportunities and revenue scope out integrations, you know, overall provide that exception exceptional service for our shared merchants. Um, now, prior to Gorgeous, I was working at Optily, which is more in the marketing tech space. And I worked there with my colleague to build that program from the ground up. So just total end-to-end -end, uh, partner management from you know all the nitty gritty of building out all of the processes to adding value to our partnerships. And you know, I was seeing Gorgeous all over my LinkedIn. I had been a fan of Gorgeous for a while, seeing all of their fun events and webinars and partner successes. So one day I saw Chris Lavoie, who is the um, tech partner lead over at here at Gorgeous. He posted about an open role for the tech partner manager. And I was like, you know what? It is one of those things where you just got to take the risk. You got to take the risk. You got to apply for this job. I had been admiring them for so long, waiting for a role to potentially open up. And I was like, you know what? This is the time. So I applied, you know, talked with Chris, you know, did everything. Um, and yeah, here I am. Yay, that's so exciting. Yeah, I myself see them everywhere. See Gorgeous's name all over. Um, so definitely joined a great company. And, and, you know, I'm sure your previous one helped you ramp up to get to what you're doing today. Um, I think it would be helpful too for me to understand. So was your previous company in, in e-commerce um, 
type of industry? Yeah, definitely. So still in the e-commerce space, they were more so helping um, merchants, you know, really optimize their uh, marketing and ad spend. So still very much so working with like those direct to consumer e-commerce merchants. Um, so I was very lucky to, you know, gain some of that industry knowledge at Optoly, but that was the first role that I was at in e-commerce, which was last year. So there was definitely still very much so that learning curve of ramping up and learning the industry as fast as possible. Yeah, definitely. And then things definitely move fast to an e-commerce. So um, mm -hmm. that's good to hear. I, I think it would be helpful too, for me to understand maybe the first few things you did when you started at Gorgeous that kind of really, I guess, what were those top priorities, um, you know, of what you started to do and what you were focusing in as you started at Gorgeous to really help that adjustment? Yeah, definitely. So there were definitely some like top points that I needed to focus on to ramp up like super quickly. So the first one was doing a ton of research. The biggest learning curve was that Gorgeous's partner program was a much more mature model than I was used to. In my previous roles, I was either building the program or helping to build the program, so very much so from the ground up. But coming into Gorgeous, it was already an established program with established processes, so I really needed to do a ton of research. Um, I knew that I needed to learn as quickly as possible so I could hack that system and be a top performer. Um, I'm definitely someone who needs to feel confident in in order to execute at that high performance level. So I needed to become an expert on Gorgeous, our solution, the problem we're solving, why our partners want to partner with us, et cetera. Um, and of course the team was, you know, really helpful to ensure that I was being supported the entire way, you know, providing resources to everything that I need. And as far as like what I did specifically to ramp up quickly, the top tips that I have is like, lean on your team and community. Like if you're joining an established partner team, then talk to your other partner manager peers, find out what works for them to drive opportunity, like set up 15 to 20 minutes with them to learn exactly what they're doing to reach their goals each month. If you're a first time partner hire, which I can relate to lean on community. There's some amazing partner communities out there, like partnership leaders, um, shop Shopify partner community. I mean, LinkedIn, like there's so many people in the space who are willing to help and meet with you. I'd also say like, learn what value you can bring to your partners early on. This is something that I really made it a point to learn very quickly as I joined my role, because the faster you figure out what value it is you drive to your partners, the easier it'll be for you to create successful partnerships. Have this value in your back pocket. Maybe it's webinar invites because you hold two webinars a month. Know your value like the back of your hand. So when you go into partner discovery calls, you can ask them, what does a win like look like for you? And if they say, well, we're big in the UK, but we're trying to grow our presence more in the US. So we're definitely focused on like brand awareness activities. Bingo. Mm -hmm. Now you know for a fact that you are going to bring value to that partnership and you know that you could move so much faster um, with this partner. So it's really good to have that understanding early on of like, okay, what value can I bring to a partnership? So when you start ramping up, and I'm sure during ramp up, like myself, you're in a ton of partner meet and greet calls, meeting with all of these partners or establishing new partner relationships. When you know early on what win you can bring, it just takes the relationship and like you your ramp up so much more seamless and so much faster. Those are seriously all such great points that not only help you adjust to a new industry, a new team, a, a learning a completely new product, but it's also really helping you be a better partner to all of the partners that you work with. Um, you mentioned team size in the very beginning. What was the difference in team size um, coming from where you were previously to then gorgeous? Yeah, for sure. Like the amount of partners that we were working with. Or just the team you work with, other partner managers that were on your team? Did you have partner marketing contacts? And um, what did that look like now while you're at Gorgeous? Yeah, so this was actually something very, very new for me. So coming into Gorgeous, it was such a learning curve getting to know that we have actual like <laughs> partner resources available dedicated to partner marketing and dedicated to partner events. This was something super new that I wasn't used to having, you know, these resources and these colleagues available. So that level of cross team collaboration was super, super new. And, you know, I'm 
so grateful <laughs> to have these, you know, team members and these colleagues available to work with because when I was at Optally, I, you know, I had, you know, marketing resources and marketing colleagues to work with and whatnot, but they weren't designated partner specific um, marketing colleagues. So, you know, it was, you had to very much so go, go through the motions of, you know, getting cross team buy-in, you know, showing how valuable partnerships can be. So stepping into Gorgeous, where I, like I mentioned before, it was an established partner community. You know, there was partner marketing uh, team members and event marketing team members who were, you know, partner specific and, you know, understood the value that partners could bring. It was, life-changing quite frankly i can imagine that's definitely an adjustment especially from you know you building the partner program from the ground mm -hmm. up and really helping out there i'm sure you're used to doing a lot of some of this stuff on your own building maybe some of these decks these one pagers hosting yes. everything yourself and having to pass off that work it is amazing but at the same time you lose a little bit of that control and that is a learning curve as well um, yes that's a good thing to point out. And I'm sure a lot of people that are transitioning into new roles, this is obviously the great resignation that we're in right now. People are getting new jobs every single day, leaving their old ones. There are going to be some differences, especially when you join a company that might have a larger department, the larger team that you're not really used to working with. So that's a huge call out there. Um, I also love that you met with all the different partner managers on your team as well. I did the same when I was in my transition and I, I feel like that's super helpful. Um, did you also meet with agency partner managers as well, just to understand their book of business and, and how they work with all of their partners? Oh yeah, definitely. Because you know what, we can learn so much from each other and yeah. the agency in terms of how the um, partner program is, you know, built and constructed at Gorgeous, like the agency team is, you know, significantly larger because historically speaking, agency partnerships have always been like the revenue generating um, aspect of partners. Right. And so on the Gorgeous side, our agency team um, in terms of partner managers is significantly larger. So I was setting up meetings, chatting with all of them learning about, you know, what works for them, how are they, you know, building deep and meaningful relationships with their partners. So, you know, what I think it's so useful to, you know, set up 15 to 20 minutes with a variety of different partner managers, whether they're agency or tech or whatever it may be in your org to really understand what are they doing to see these wins and how can you maybe tweak that or adjust it and do something similar. So it translates to your business. I love that. Each of these partner ecosystems are completely different. So mm -hmm. as you are transitioning, understanding the types of partners you're working with, but also what the existing partner managers are currently doing and how they're finding success is huge. And I also do love you really do focus and emphasize on you are giving to hopefully get in the future. So you're not coming into it really hot and asking for, hey, where are some referrals? You're really trying to understand what are my partner's needs and how can I help you? Um, I think another really great and important tactic too, at least I know what I had to do um, when I first was trying to get a good understanding of all of my partners was ask them all to give me demos of their product too, especially if you're changing completely different spaces and then just setting up maybe a bi-weekly, even if you know you're not going to be able to discuss that much. And maybe if it's just a 15 minute sync, as you're trying to get to know them and establish this relationship, I think that's super important to stay in touch. Yeah, a hundred percent agree. <laughs> um, I'd love if you can share a day in the life of your role, maybe some top priorities you work on, the different teams you work with, um, longer team goals that you guys are all focused on. Just get, give me a little overview. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I'll take you through my day to day. So typically it starts with the same question in mind and it's always, what am I going to do today to hit my quota? Mm -hmm. So like I mentioned before, you know, tech partners have never really been seen as a legit revenue source. So what my team is doing is you know, our, my colleagues and I are actively trying to change that inner narrative where we're trying to show that, you know, tech partnerships can be a legit revenue source for your business. You know, they have a seat at the table. Not only are we providing, you know, a super 
beneficial and exceptional experience for our shared merchants through deep integrations, but we're also bringing in more business and more revenue and more customers. Um, so that's typically the question um, that I ask myself in the morning is, okay, what can I do today to hit that quota? But usually, you know, as far as tasks that I'm doing, it involves, you know, meetings with partners to review goals and plans. You know, what are we going to do this month or this quarter to really heat up our partnership and take things to the next level? Um, working with partner marketing to align on co-marketing opportunities. Are we going to be doing some blog swaps with partners, case studies, all that good stuff? Um, working with the events team for webinars and in-person event opportunities. Working with product for new <laughs> integration partners. It's a ton of cross collaboration daily. You know, mm -hmm. you're you're working with um, all areas of the um, partner org to really heat up these partnerships because you know I'm overseeing seeing not only, you know, some partnerships for like co-marketing and for events and whatnot in general, but also talking with new partners who want to build an integration with us. So it's a lot of working with product to start getting things ironed out as far as um, long-term goals go. So of course we want to continue growing our tech partner team right now on our tech partner team. It's just myself and four other colleagues. We make up the tech partner team, whereas the agency team has quite a large team. So we of course want to continue growing and scaling this new uh, playbook and this new um, area of the team. And as far as like my long-term goal goes, I basically oversee our trusted partners. So what that means is how our um, tech partner uh, program is structured as we have certified, which is like newly onboarded partners, trusted, which is going to be like that middle tier of partners and preferred, um, which is like the best of the best. They've grown through the um, partner tier structure. I oversee our trusted partners and all of our newly onboarded partners. So it's my job to really nurture all of these partners to become that preferred gorgeous partner. So that's typically what my day to day looks Looks like and what my goals look like. That is so much. But one thing <laughs> I loved about partnerships too is just how cross-functional your role can mm -hmm. be. You're not coming to work and doing the same thing every single day. Um, we get to work with product um, overseeing and helping with that integration roadmap and getting um, integrations developed and launching partnerships from there all the way to obviously co-selling. Like you said, you got to hit your quota. So leveraging tools like Crossbeam, Reveal, Share Work, everything like that mm -hmm. to literally look at those overlaps and then working with marketing and events to also use those tools to see what we can do. Um, it would be good to know too, because I know it, each role is different. I came from a company too, where, and you were previously as well, where your marketing resources and those roles were not dedicated to partnerships, but now gorgeous, you do have those partner dedicated marketing roles. Um, what is the process now for, you know, showcasing an event that you want to do or a webinar or some cocktail reception with one of your partners? And how do you get that approved and across the line? Yeah, definitely. So um, let's say, for example, my partner and I want to do either like a joint webinar or do some sort of like happy hour or dinner together. Obviously, we want to scope out the opportunity and scope out the um, you know possibility of doing that. Like, do we want to have just the two of us? Do we want to loop in maybe another partner or a fourth partner to make it, you know, really fun and lively? Um, so we'll usually scope out that opportunity size first, kind of figure out what vibe do we want to go with? Are we going to do like a rooftop or something? Figure out the idea. Um, and then and I'll loop in my fabulous colleague. Um, she is amazing. She's our <laughs> events manager, Anna, um, and also Brittany on our team as well, the events duo dream team. Love loop her. them into that email. We'll all get on a call, chat over the details, look over the days, the times, you know, how we can really make this happen. And, you know, once Anna and Brittany and my partners all meet together to chat over the details, that's usually when they'll review to see if this would be a good opportunity for us. You know, if we will see that return as well. Um, and then typically if we will, they'll approve it and it's uh, full steam ahead. Amazing. I love that. Okay. So good process in place, really staying aligned and connected with your marketing team to help accelerate those. Um, and I think for other people that might be listening that are trying to do more and just generate more leads and opportunities with some of their new partners, 
and you can't get a lot out of, you know, asking for intros, um, co-marketing events are always a great idea. And I think even being able to showcase maybe some overlaps that you share in Crossbeam and that total addressable market that you can hopefully target with some of these events is a really great way to um, get this in front of marketing and, and push them to, to really commit to this a little bit more. But it is... Oh, yeah. It's a lot. Obviously, working with so many different roles requires you to speak in different languages and, and talk to also what each of these teams really do want to see and, and what success it will bring them. So that's super good to know. Um, I would love to learn a little bit more about some of the things that you've learned specifically from Gorgeous. Um, it can be in e-commerce in general, um, maybe just strictly within partnerships, but I'd love to know what you've learned from your time here at Gorgeous so far, which has only been a few months, correct? Yes. So I joined the team top of January. Nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what have you learned in the past like three and a half months? <laughs> So there are two main things that I learned. I've learned a bunch, but there's two main things I've taken away so far. The first one is being take the risk, but do it at a small scale. So if you have an idea for co-marketing or for um, account mapping or enablement, trial it with two to three partners to measure the impact. Oftentimes, and I'm guilty of this, when we get new ideas, you look at it with these rose, rose colored glasses and you're like, yes, this is the idea. This is it. And you, you want to really just do it with all of your partners because you know it's such a good idea. But you will save so much time if you try this new activity with two to three partners and just see what happens. If it's a hit, then yes, you have the next golden idea. But if it flops, then you, you, know, you didn't waste a ton of time or resources. So that's one of my biggest learnings is take the risk, but do it at a small scale. And the second one is partner attribution is possible. <laughs> so this how, is something here. How are you guys doing this? <laughs> yes, this is something that all partner professionals can relate with. It's like the struggle of attribution. It is possible. Gorgeous does a fantastic job at tracking attribution for partnerships. Like there's some really brilliant people who work here at Gorgeous who have built out some really amazing automations and tracking for partner sourced or influenced deals. Like it's incredible to see. I mean, my partners ask me like how, how we track and attribute deals. And I'm like, it, it's <laughs> wild because of all of the work that goes in on the back end through yeah. automation and tracking and getting so nitty gritty and granular with tracking where the partner found Gorgeous and how they discovered Gorgeous. Um, so it's really incredible to see. We have a hefty, hefty tech stack that our ops team manages to make work super harmoniously. Like, like I mentioned, it's incredible to see between HubSpot, partner stack, Zapier, like, I don't know how they do it, but it's incredible. So that's something else that I've taken away is partner attribution is definitely possible. That is amazing to hear, but yes, you will have to share all of those tips and tricks. Yes. With everyone. <laughs> yes, that, that is something that's really, really an issue. I think just in the channel in general, um, but also depending on how um, you consider partner influence or partner generated. And that's another question I'd love to ask you. Are you measured on partner influence, partner source, partner generated? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. So I'm, uh, my KPI is partner sourced net new ARR. So close one ARR that we can source back to our partners mm -hmm. and the group of partners that I manage. Amazing. And then do you still track influence just for those data purposes and really trying to understand when partners come into conversations and how they move the line? Yeah, we definitely do track, you know, various touch points. We have a main touch point that, you know, we'll get the bulk of the um, influence and get the bulk of that, you know, attribution and credit. But we do track other smaller influences because when a customer, you know, comes in contact with Gorgeous, you know, the, the perfect ideal situation is they came in just from hearing about us from a partner. But that might not be the case. Maybe they hear about us from a partner a couple, you know, maybe two months ago. And then sometimes, you know, they'll see some ads or they'll have our outbound team reaching out to them. So there's multiple touch points that happen throughout a customer's life cycle. So we definitely do track those, you know, smaller um, influences. 
Yes, definitely. There's always multiple touch points. It's good just mm-hmm. to better understand all of them and, and also see too, is this prospect coming my way because of a specific integration that we have? If we didn't have this integration, would they still be interested in our solution or maybe go to a competitor that does have an integration? Those are all some of the questions that are always in the tech partner <laughs> type of world, but that is all really great to hear. I love uh, taking a risk and starting different trials with some small partners. Um, that is absolutely huge. And that's something I have learned in my uh, process and new role as well. I think it's super important to try to do new things, engage all of these partners, but maybe just pick one to start with. Um, Mm -hmm. That is a great, great thing that you learned in just a short amount of time. So continue to do that because I'm sure you will see a lot of success if you haven't already. (laughs) Um, I think it would also be helpful just for people that are listening. I've had some listeners too that have want to get into partnerships, um, maybe transitioning from uh, a sales role and wanting just to do partnerships specifically or changing industries completely, really understanding um, and trying to help describe your role to someone that has no clue what partnerships or gorgeous is. Like if you are talking to your family, how do you describe it to them? <laughs> this is actually really funny that you say that because I find myself explaining this a lot. My family calls me the Chandler from friends because they have no idea what I do. Oh so, when, <laughs> so I'm the perfect way to describe this now. <laughs> <laughs> so for someone who is unfamiliar with, you know, what partnerships are or what a partner manager does, basically what I do is develop a strategy with other e-commerce business uh, partner managers to achieve joint business objectives. And what those objectives typically are, are either like new opportunities or new deals. So we work together to drive new deals to one another. And by doing that at scale, my main goal is to have many partners that are driving gorgeous, many new deals. And I'm doing the same for my partners. I'm driving them new deals as well. I love it. Absolutely love that. There's so much that goes into your role specifically. And that was just a great summary on how you can describe everything that you're doing, working cross-functionally, aligning with product and engineering, understanding the integration roadmap, aligning with marketing to launch those integrations, working with sales and and (laughs) introductions and referrals. There's there's so much that you're doing in a day-to-day. So that was a very great summary. I absolutely love that. And and I'm sure it makes sense to your family. They're probably like, oh, okay. Yeah. (laughs) They're like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Sure. (laughs) I love it. So just want to wrap up here and and ask you this final question. Obviously, I started this off with, you know, really trying to understand some of the key things that you can use to help a transition into a new role, maybe a new industry within partnerships and get comfortable. We talked a little bit about your role of gorgeous and everything that you're doing on a day-to-day basis and how you're seeing success. And I think it would be helpful to wrap it up with understanding a little bit about the good, the bad, and the ugly, everything that you've experienced. I think that the bad and the ugly really do help to make something really good. Um, So it's not necessarily bad or ugly, but it's a part of the process and the journey that we have to go on to then see success. So share a little bit of that with me and and how you have found this success now in your newfound role. Yeah, definitely. So I guess starting off with the good, you know, I was super amped up and excited to hit the ground running because I joined at the top of 2022. So everyone was on the same mindset of excitement, you know, excited to be starting fresh. So it was an incredible feeling to have that, you know, synergetic energy with everyone on the team. Now going into like the not so great to keep it real, like it was a hustle, you know, it was the hustle and being uncomfortable. I do have that monthly quota. So, you know, I had to really hustle and grind at the start to really heat up these partnerships that I was managing fast and start driving those opportunities. And I was definitely out of my comfort zone. You know, when you're working that fast, your personal growth is like 10 X the normal speed. (laughs) (laughs) And it can be really uncomfortable to be doing activities or events that you're not used to, Mm -hmm. but you grow so fast. And that's the success that comes out of like that bad and that ugly is that, you know, it's really uncomfortable to be uncomfortable, but I'm a totally different person now compared to when I first started, which was only such a short period ago because I took risks and allowed myself to embrace the uncomfortable. And that's 
the best thing to come out of all of that, uh, you know, out of that hustle and that grind and out of, you know, that feeling of being uncomfortable and not so sure. Um, and especially as women in tech, like, let's keep it real. Imposter syndrome is very yeah. real, right? <laughs> um, and it's very uncomfortable, but, you know, you realize your self-worth, you, you grow at such an intense speed. Like there's this saying I saw not too long ago, um, that was like, if you're not embarrassed by what you were doing six weeks ago, then you're not growing fast enough. Oh, like I'm, I'm embarrassed by who I was a week ago, let alone <laughs> six. <But> like, <laughs> so it's, it's so true. A hundred percent. So it's, you know, it's fast, it's furious, but it's so worth it because your personal growth, your personal development, the skills that you learn um, from working that fast and from putting yourself in uncomfortable situations, like it's, it's unmatched. It's so worth it. I'm so glad we ended on this note too, because I think that is huge. And I think through the past two years of working remote and living through a pandemic, not being able to get in front of as many um, employees, partners as we'd like, we, there is a huge adjustment and learning curve just in that. But starting in a new role, there is going to be really, really great things. There are going to be some not so great things like you mentioned, but that's just part of the process and you will get through it. And already three months in, you are feeling so comfortable and, and definitely shining and you seem very, very knowledgeable in everything that you're doing. So for those that are listening, that are thinking of starting a new role, but are too terrified and scared of this change or those that are currently going through it right now, it is totally okay. You'll, you'll get through it and come out of the other end shining. hundred <laughs> percent. I couldn't have said it better myself. Like if you're that person who's unsure, if you want to take that leap and, you know, make that career transition into partners, into partnerships, do it. You will love it. Like the partner community is so amazing, so helpful because in the past there, you know, there were not nearly as many resources as that are available now for partner professionals. So as a community, like even yourself with this podcast, like we're constantly helping one another to grow and to shine. So if you're considering the, you know, joining the partnerships world, do it a hundred percent. You will love it. And if you're in the role and you're grinding and it's fast and furious right now, you are going to come out shining on the other end. I promise it's worth it. <laughs> Oh, amazing, Mia. Well, thank you so much for sharing your experience with me today. And I know those that are listening are absolutely going to love it. And who knows, you might have a few new applicants for gorgeous because yes. you pulled them all on it. Um, <laughs> but this was super helpful. And once again, yes, this podcast is here to help with people that are wanting to understand a little bit more about the space, but also understand a little bit more enablement. We have great, great episodes, including obviously this one, which is definitely a new all-time favorite. Um, but I I really appreciate your time today and excited to maybe catch up and see how you're feeling in another three months. <laughs> yes, it sounds good. Thank you so, so much for having me, Corinna. We will chat soon, okay? Thank you, Mia.